previously on St. Elsewhere. Mercy. You haven't lost an ounce. I nearly killed myself trying to kiss 20 pounds goodbye. She married a chocolatier. She and Klaus had a cute little cottage at the foot of the Alps. Here's the deal. The cities decide to sell St. Allegis. There's a proposal I want to offer the mayor, and it'll show that we can cut this deficit. I want you to take this down to the mailroom. Present for Mrs. Craig's mother. Where's his head? some flannel jammies. Or you could move in. I thought we slammed the gate on that subject. Shacking up the cop out. Okay. Why don't you marry me then? What? You know I can't hear you when the water's running. I said, marry me. That's not what you want. I'm getting older, you know. Not much time left if we want little kitties, hmm? No. <clears throat> Stop. Stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We can make cute little babies. My profile. Your hairline. Yes? You're wasting water. <sighs> I'll make coffee. Come on. 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 All right, on your way. You know the drill. I always do everything you tell me. Yeah. Bye. So long, Doc. Old girlfriend? Lulu. Comes in every month like clockwork. Hypertension, emphysema, loneliness. I run some tests, test her meds, keep her company. Oh, thank you. Gotta go. OBGYN okay, rounds with Turner. Give your muck locks in case the water breaks. <laughs> Willie McClintock? Me. Uh, what happened? Uh, squirrel on the road, swerved. Dump my super glide. 50 feet of black top body massage. Lucky squirrel? Yeah, and I thought I had him nailed for sure. This 
way. The controlling costs in the ER is essential if we're going to save this place from the auction block, Daniel. We have to convince the mayor that we can cut the deficit. I'm up through with my end of the proposal. Good. All right. Why don't you in my office? We'll go over the numbers, huh? The decision to sell the hospital couldn't have come at a worse time. Huh? Is there ever a good time? I mean, for me personally. I'm in the middle of my chemo cycle. Wooziness, trouble concentrating. Not the match for City Hall I used to be. Helen, you look like you've been rode hard and put away wet. Pardon. Old Greek expression. I've been cleaning house all week. Marcy and her husband are coming home from Zurich today. It's the first time they've been stateside since they were married. Luckily, Richard's taking all the other kids shopping to L.L. Bean in Freeport, Maine, so we'll all get to spend some time together. You like your new son-in-law? Class is sweet. He always brings us chocolate. Ooh, candy mogul. Lucky you. Mother's Day must be a bonbon bonanza. <laughs> Dad, wait, what did the doctor say? It was my father. He rushed the conversation. He's coming up from Marshfield. Veterinarian's day off? He's coming for chemotherapy. My dad's got cancer. No insurance? Strictly for Vicks. Victims? Civilians? What do you do? Mm, a little of this, a little of that. Push, him, trick. Headache? Yeah. Are you wearing your helmet? On a Harley, give me a break. You lose consciousness? Oh, for a second, I don't remember. You gonna give me something for the pain? Maybe. Perk dance? We'll see. I like perks. Did it hurt here? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, it's dog time. No way. Could be a concussion. You cracked ribs. i run some tests. Get a chest x-ray. Keep you overnight for observation. Hey, hey, just give me the dope and let me blow this rat hole. A head injury is no joke. You do. I'm Jewish. You're supposed to make the best doctors. And the worst wine. <laughs> Elliot. Check this out. Check me out. Bank statement. Here she in at his age. This morning I dropped by the automatic teller. I withdrew 20 bucks. When I got the receipt, my account had been credited 102,000 smackers. Of course, I'm going to call Pilgrim National and tell them, but it's fun. You know, you make me puke. Not everyone cares about your stupid savings account or your stupid life for that matter. So what? I'm rich. That's it? That's the heart? Beating like a little tom-tom. Wild. Henry didn't want me to have this procedure. No one's completely positive ultrasound's safe for the fetus. You're so sweet and concerned. Mrs. Orr is 43. Late pregnancies have added risks of birth defects. Good idea to look for problems on the sonogram. If I'm only have one with Angie, I want this baby to be perfect. Yeah, not fair to the child to continue the pregnancy if there's anything wrong. Past your amniocentesis with flying colors. Genetically, your baby is fine. Look at this, Angie. <laughs> I've seen it before, honey. This is Henry's first. I have two by a previous marriage. Wild. See that? What? 
There. Anything? A little blurry is all. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Are you sure? I'll go over the film again and call you if anything turns up. Otherwise, you are in good shape. And I have a full delivery schedule. Dad! 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 Damn it, Elliot. You're slobbering and tangling up Jinx's leash. Good girl. The baby. How bad is it? Bad. Mangiosarcoma metastasis. Oh, no. Stand up straight. And, uh, I called the other night, you know, on the phone, and there's all this crying in the background. Mom. Jinx. He knows about the cancer? She. Of course. Wow. Well, I guess dogs just sense that kind of stuff, huh? Jinx is in a lot of pain. I'd like to start her on cis, platinum, and adriamycin treatments. Stat. What for? Snap to it, Elliot. Weren't you listening when I called? You said you were coming here for chemotherapy. For Jinx. God. You're happy she's sick? No, no, of course not. I'm just happy you're not. <laughs> All right, let's get inside. Come on, girl. We, we can't treat a dog here. I okayed it with Dr. Westfall. You call Dr. Westfall? My clinic doesn't have the facilities for chemo. Come on, Dad, <laughs> is Jinx housebroken? Better than you were. At eight. Come on, baby. Hello? Well, I'll bet you're Klaus. <laughs> Lucy Papandreou, welcome to Boston. Thank you. It's so different from Zurich. You mean dirty, run down, depressing? Oh, lifting. Swiss cleanliness is make-believe. The world is not gingerbread and marzipan. <laughs> Boston could use a little bit more fantasy. So good, this place. You know, actually, I feel at home in a hospital. My father and brother run the Schwarzwald Clinic in West Germany. Oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> Where's Marcy? She stopped off in the cafeteria for a bite. I wanted to come ahead and speak with you first about Marcy. I'm worried. Is she sick? No, no, no. She's um, healthy as a house. House? Helen, your little girl has changed some since you saw her last. She's... Ma! of the pits. Complain to your doctor. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Pill. What? Take that. <sighs> oh. You're cute. Blonde all over. Uh, look, you do that one more time and you'll wish you hadn't. I like it when you say no. Problem here? Yeah, you're looking at him. 
<laughs> Don't hassle the nurses, okay? Uptight lame. I thought you people were supposed to be so hip. Your x-rays show you have three broken ribs on the left side. Tape me up. No, we don't do that anymore. The ribs will heal on their own. Somebody will take you up for a CAT scan real soon, okay? I want the Jew back. Excuse me? The one down in ER. You know, a second opinion. I don't think you know what you're talking about. Look, when they brought you up here, you became my patient. Now, you may not like that. Neither do I. But while you're up here, try and act as if you evolved. Like the rest of us. There. That's what I spotted earlier. Looks like a small hole in the ventricle. A septal defect. Yeah, I saw it too. How come you didn't tell the oars? There's something important to learn during your OB rotation. Don't communicate alarm. You panic the parents. They should know. You heard that couple there. They're looking for perfection. The minute they find out there's anything wrong with their dream baby, even minor, they're going to hit the ejection button. So you're not going to tell them anything? I'll assess farther down the road. After it's too late for a legal abortion. You're a rookie resident, Carol. Until you've been around, don't lay a crusade on me. Mm. Oh, real Swiss hot chocolate is to die for. Nowhere in the world do they make a finer cup of cocoa. Oh, Rumpel Myers in New York has excellent hot chocolate with real whipped cream. Klaus, you don't have to play the polite tourist. <laughs> Mother, did you know that the Swiss perfected milk chocolate in 1876? No, I guess I'd forgotten. I mean, I ask you, why fool around with imitations? American chocolate is full of emulsifiers, made fast and cheap for maximum profit. Just like everything else in this tasteless country. Cool, little cops, that is a little harsh. Yes, but true. Cos already does the classics. Brinkman's white chocolate with raspberry liqueur. Oh, <laughs> and his dark chocolate almond bark. It's world famous. Now, you overrate me, my little cocoa butt. He's so dedicated. And beloved by his workers. Do you know that Klaus often goes down to the factory himself to help them pack the fudge? <laughs> and what do you do? Uh, Marcy has been working as a, as a taster. <gasps> I understand. Yeah, she has a sensitive note. She can <laughs> sniff out a stale Grand Marnier truffle at 50 meters. Mm. And I have all kinds of ideas for new products. Novelty items. How long do I need uh, medication change, please? Hi, Elliot. Hi. Marcy, hi. I didn't recognize you. You look the same. You don't. The last time I saw you, you know, we had gone on diets together. I had gained. Yeah, and I lost. I know, a lot. You were gorgeous, slim, and trim. I was not. I'd never been trim in my life. You were positively spelt, wasn't she, Klaus? Yeah, you were luscious when we got married, Lucian. Oh, congratulations. You must be Klaus. I'm Elliot Axelrod. How are you doing? Probably a good yodeler, huh? <laughs> Anybody want more? I do. So you want to join me? No, thanks. After chemo, food has all the appeal of root canal. I wonder if it affects the dog's appetite. These figures bottle the mind. Our emergency room treats 70,000 patients a year. Half of them don't have insurance, and they got a half can't or won't pay. If we'd have convinced the mayor not to sell the hospital, we have to show him we can change our ER policies. St. Aloysius has always had a strong commitment to care for the poor. Now, that very commitment is what threatens its survival. 
the good neighbor policy. Uh, look, I know this report was my idea, Daniel, but the scope of these changes, I mean, I'd hate like hell to start weighing compassion against cost. We've already lost time with the mayor. And we help no one if we become the victims of our own charity. I want to lay down new guidelines on admission. Now, the trick is to make some tough decisions without losing our humanity. <sighs> Nuts to it, Daniel. If we have to compromise the care we give, to hell with it. What's the point of it? Let them sell the damn place. my student loan. I could buy mutual funds. I could invest in tax-free bonds. Uh, start saving for peace Jack, college. Jack, you're not thinking of keeping that money. No. No. I mean, no. It wouldn't be ethical. It has crossed my mind. How can you think that? Only a matter of time before the computer finds the error. Could at least transfer it to an interest account. You spend that money. You're in deep. No, of course. You're right. Besides, what would your brother the cop say? Sorry I'm late. Someone stole my watch. Did you stole the police? Yeah, they said they admired the guy's bravado. Come on, anyway, you can have a nice run. Close. What happened to her? Yeah, but most tasters get sick of chocolate. Not Marcy. When she samples a batch, she doesn't just nibble a single piece. She she downs a dozen. Look, this is a delicate question, but food can sometimes be compensation. Yeah, please, say no more. When I first knew Marcy, she was toothsome, delicious. I couldn't get enough. Then she became softy, fine by me, so scrumptious. Then she grew to be uh, Rubenesque, still okay. I loved her more. <laughs> but then it was more to love. But now she's... Um, What's the word? Um, pocket them. Have you talked to her? Yeah, constantly. But how many times can you say, sweetheart, don't you think you've had enough? Look, I, Helen, I will pay for anything. Uh, stomach, staple, fat suction, aversion therapy. I, I'm sure that between the two of us, we can convince yeah, her. But I feel responsible. I offered the first lick a taste of the candied forbidden fruit. And now she's a, a chocoholic. I love Marcy, but I, I can't live with her any longer. What? Yeah, I am unable to change meine kleine Frau. That is why I am leaving her here with you and I am returning to Zurich tomorrow. Helen, you must help her. Or I don't wish to see your daughter again. The moon in the sky was just twinkling stars and the man in the moon. Now, there's black holes, pulsars, supernovas, all kinds of junk. It's still moving. Everything is more complicated now. I can turn on the machine and look inside the womb. It forces parents to deal with things they never had to before. Prenatal diagnosis can save a lot of trouble later on. Well, sometimes, well, sometimes I find a problem that's not serious and the parents become frightened and decide to abort. Nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Just who is my patient here exactly? The mother, yes, but... I'm watching the ultrasound. This little thing is bopping around. Does it become my patient, too? They toss in the father for good measure. Who's most important? It's simple. All three. Come on, fast. Fast. <laughs> I can't keep up this marathon pace. Come on. I'm so slow, Push, 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 push. So what are you trying to say? I prefer the good old country doctor approach. Yep, you are PG, Miss Melvin Belly. Come back and see me in nine months. <laughs> hey, don't trip off the porch. <laughs> ah, 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 
Patients have the right to know everything we can tell them. I could be risking the future of the fetus unnecessarily. Well, making a personal decision that can affect a lot of lives is not up to us. What is? The truth. Ha! Come on. Liver appears to be shrunken and cirrhotic. Oh, here you are. Dad, what are you doing in the morgue? Our pathologist was fired for selling body parts, and I'm filling in evenings to earn extra money. You know, you should really get her out of here. Relax, buddy boy. She'll be a perfect lady. You know, you're doing a terrible job. Make those incisions smoother. You know, Dr. Auschleiner came to me and really chewed me out about Jinx. That old goat acted like an ass, and I told him so. Great. Terrific. <gasps> How can anyone get angry with anything as sweet as she is? Look at her. Dad, just please take Jinx home. I'm really very busy. A couple from Cohasset left Jinx at my veterinary office. Never came back. She's been with me now for about five months. You know the sewing room? Yes, my old room. Ah, huh, right. Your mother moved a bed in there for herself. So Jinx and I are in the master room. She sleeps next to me, moaning, breaking wind. Not very much different than your mother, really. Snores less. <laughs> well, see you uh, tomorrow. Early's best for me. What for? For Jinx's chemo. How often are we going to have this conversation? You're bringing her back? Of course, dummy. She's on a two-day drug cycle. But, Dad... Well, see you about nine. Here you go. Mm. Dad, no, please. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Liver, high in iron. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. That's good. Of course. Bad dream? Geezer in the next bed's got sewer gas. Well, please accept the management's heartfelt apologies. No complaints. This is like Walpole. Free lunch, dinner, color TV. And the public foots the bill. Oh, boo, freaking who? I'll remember you in April when I'm paying taxes. I knew a nurse who liked to party. Do you like to party? You got the lips for it. Yeah? Read them. Take a hike. <laughs> Code blue, room Truffles at three in the morning. Well, it's um breakfast time in Switzerland. Would you like one? Klaus is leaving you tomorrow. I know. And he won't come back until you go on the wagon and lose weight. Oh, it's just being the European and dramatic. Klaus is right. You have a problem. I'm happy. Or just let go a little. You're enormous. That's a sweet thing to say to your daughter. I see you need help. You're addicted to chocolate. I'm not. I can quit any time. Are you going to wait until you're the size of the Hindenburg? And your husband is tickling another woman's Alps? My Clausen can't live without me. Believe me, Marcy. If you don't fight for your marriage, you can kiss Clausen goodbye. You're one to talk. Four marriages, four divorces. Just as we started getting used to one stepfather, there'd be some new guy sitting at the breakfast table and another half-sibling on the way. Maybe if you'd spent just a little more time with your first husband, Dad, 
And with me, I wouldn't be so screwed up. I worked full time, kept a home, offered advice, never stood in the way. You've moped around this house since puberty, and then suddenly, bam, off to Switzerland into marriage, and all you sent was a candy gram. It's time you took responsibility for your problems instead of burying them under layers of blubber. You're right. I'm going cold turkey. Right now. Because the last thing in the world I ever want to be like is you! Start life as a puzzle cube. Don't get at it grammatical so early in the day, physics. P O S S L Q. Persons of opposite sex sharing living quarters. It's a census term for cohabitating. Right. Didn't know you and Roxanne were ready to live together. We aren't. Well, we are. At least one of us is. Oh, by the way, thank you for that scum bucket ER admission, Willie McClintock. Motorcycle accident, anti semi. Mm. Right, racist, misogynist, thief. Lucy said he tried to rip off someone's purse last night. I never should have admitted him. Because he's a jerk, he had a head injury. Well, all the results came back negative today, so I'm releasing him. Boomer heard about the windfall. 102,000, that's some snafu. What did the bank say when you called? Uh, nothing. I haven't told them. Yeah. They made the mistake. They put the money in my account. So? Now it's mine. All mine. Binders, keepers, losers, weepers. Nobody will buy that, Jack. Especially the police. Maybe that money was put there for a reason. Boomer, this isn't It's a Wonderful Life. You're not Jimmy Stewart. Oh. Oops. Uh, a little help, please. Oof, ugly shoes. Thanks. And you, Elliot? Dr. Westfall. Yes, sir. Man with a collie I saw on the elevator today. Your father? Y yes, sir. Uh, the man, that is. What's he doing here? Canine chemotherapy. Remember he discussed it with you? Yes, I do. I told him no. What? Now, look, Elliot, it's obvious that your father's very fond of that dog. But this hospital is under the gun, and we can't be treating animals while we're turning people away. But he told me... What really gets to me is you're allowing your father to use these facilities behind my back. But, sir... I you... don't appreciate being ignored, Elliot. And you send your father and that dog on their way. Well, but, sir, if you'd let me explain, I... I... Elliot? Yes, I know, sir. Quit while I'm ahead. You're too late. Lucy, I've got a pregnant mother with angina. Can't find Dr. Craig for a consult. Probably because he's up in Vermont. Morning. Well, who died? Mrs. Craig's mother. Oh, it's a bizarre story. Couldn't be true. But word is Dr. Craig sent his mother-in-law a box containing a human head for a birthday present. What? Yeah. The old lady opens up the package and drops dead from a heart attack.
The hole usually closes on its own. What if it doesn't? The ventricle can be repaired surgically soon after birth. Surgery on a newborn? Isn't that dangerous? Possibly. What's the worst that can happen? Still birth. The baby's inability to tolerate an operation. The rare chance that this defect is related to others we haven't found. Dr. Turner, can you guarantee our baby will be able to live a normal life? No. Henry and I really want to have a child together. But there's no reason to take chances. I already have two beautiful, healthy daughters. Henry. We can't afford endless hospitalization on my coverage. If this child needs constant care, Angie and I are going to be hard-pressed to find the money. And we'll just deprive the other kids. I'm sorry, honey. Before you decide, you want perfect. After any kid is born, you have to give some latitude for problems it might have. Give this one some latitude now. I think Angie and I have already decided, Dr. Turner. We have the right to choose. Yes, you do have the right. Then we'd like to terminate the pregnancy. Lucky saver. So, how's the good life, pipe bucket? Not so good. Oh, what's the matter? Get a hernia trying to smuggle out your fortune? Bank discovered the error. Well, it was only a matter of time. Debited my account for the full amount. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Hmm? Plus, they charged me six dollars handling fee. Dad, I need to talk to you. Come on, Jinx. Here, girl. It's good. Look. Come here. I get your point. Dad, I said I need to talk to you. Shut up, will you? No. I need to speak to you outside of this room and outside of this building. It's too cold out for a dog in her condition. She's been withdrawn all morning. Here, draw 10 cc's. Dad... Jinx isn't feeling well. Draw the drug. You know what to do. Hop to it. She's in pain. She's weak, anemic. That chemo probably can't stop the internal bleeding. Dad, let's forget about the dog right now. It's you. You lied to me. Give me that. This will help you, girl. You told me Dr. Westall okay Jinx's chemotherapy. Now, I'm in the doghouse with him. No worry. No more hurt. Besides, what is it going to look like, my father dragging an old collie around the hospital? I'm with you, puppy. Dad, I'm a resident here. I have to work here every single day. You didn't take me into account. You paraded around this hospital like you owned it. You embarrassed me. Those bunnies you used to chase, never quite wanting to catch. Those long walks in the woods. Your coat full of ticks. Clipping your claws and watching your eyes cloud with cataracts. What was that? I had to put Jinx to sleep. She's dead. She is? She'll be warm for an hour or so. Soft, still. Collie smell in her fur. But she won't be in pain anymore. <laughs> the end, old girl. What are you staring at?
Class seems sad this morning, Marcy, when he went off to Logan. Actually, it's nice that we're alone. We need time to talk. I took the day off to be with you. Marcy? Marcy, are you all right? Marcy? Oh! She collapsed up, really. Push that back to the ward. After four and a half, like she did mouth to mouth, she finally started breathing again. It took a while. Well, we found her conscious, but lethargic with severe bronchospasm. Let's get her on six liters O2 by mask. Please, DK, Marcy. Relax. That point one of every subcute. Okay, blood gases, chest x-ray. And we gave her 400 milligrams aminophilin, which is about halfway in. Call respiratory therapy. Tell them stat treatment. She's still having bronchospasm. Aspiration can lead to pneumonia. Well, depending on how much chocolate she inhaled. I'm going to admit her to ICU so we can watch her closely for respiratory failure. Thank you. Call your mother every now and then. I call her once a week. So go crazy. Phone her twice. Here's she. I don't know. Just uh, keep it, you know? I was going to. Oh. Elliot, get a haircut. You're a mess. Oh, thanks a lot. Grooming is most important. If I had a matted Airedale. Yeah. I'm not a dog. Sit. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Kali needed help. You know, it's funny. I really never thought of a veterinarian as being a real doctor. Mm. You know, worm a few Bowsers, kill some fleas on a cat. When I saw you inside with Jinx, you were so loving and tender. Better than I am with my own patients. Of course. I've been at it longer. Elliot. Whatever kind of animal we doctors treat, each needs our devotion. I became a vet because basically people are a pain in the hindquarters. You, you can't communicate with them. They have no loyalty. But you, you care a damn about the stupid human race. So okay. Give it all you got. Come home for the holidays. Dr. Westall. Yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of rumors going around about selling the hospital. Yeah, well, that decision is being made right now. I can't tell you what's going to happen. Oh, uh, Jack, listen. I just got a phone call from the state parole board. Mm -hmm. Now, they know I sent you up there to Newcastle Prison for your community service. Uh, uh, Nick Mokes is up for a parole hearing in a week. They'd like to know if you'd go up there and testify about what happened during the riot. Now, no one's saying you have to go. I'll go. They're going to ask a lot of questions. I'll tell everything. You sure you want to go through all that? Keep Nick Motes behind the bars, yeah. Yeah. Well, from what I know, we'd all be better off. I mean, for his sake. If Motes gets out, I'll kill him.
can't tell me ER is the only reason St. Allegis is going down the pipes. Of course not. But it is an area where we can nip expenses in the bud. By refusing to help people? By choosing who is more deserving of our services. What services? Stacks of forms to fill out, endless waits, mix-ups in the lab. You know, I've begged maintenance for a week to come up here and repair the short in this lab. Forget it. If you ask me, we do too little for people, not too much. Will you switch this on, please? It's life in the inner city. We don't get the convenient patients with the convenient insurance policies. All these people are knuckleballs. If we have to start making judgment calls, we're going to end up making errors. I know it will be difficult, but you must become more selective. How? Here's a list of regulations we expect our ER doctors to follow. No non-life-threatening stays for indigents, no appointments to check hypertension, and not clogging up the system with repeaters. This is not a free clinic. Yeah, I treat people that need more than just medicine. I'm the one friendly face some of these bums see. The only one that cares, and this hospital is their last safe place. Now what? You stole my wallet. Come on. Come on. I'll make you the pig sticker. Dug you in the thug yeah. deserve to know the truth regardless of what i don't want anything too permanent because i don't know how permanent i'll be what are you talking about leaving medicine leaving boston i don't know just leaving come on you don't mean that i don't know Are you serious? Yeah. Terrific. There's some blood in your urine. It's probably a kidney infection. To see it worse, my doctor discuss. I know. Look, I'll give you a prescription for antibiotics. That's all you're going to do? What can I tell you? Come back when you're sicker. Elliot, you look depressed. Guess you heard. Heard I was there. You were? Sure. You know, I had never been as honest with my father as that. I mean, I really opened up. And I reached out to hug him and turned away. Elliot, I was talking about Marcy Eisenberg. She's an ICU. What? I gotta go. Willie, welcome back. Heard you were coming down. I'm gonna find that guy, I swear. Sit up. Uh, take it easy, I'm hurt. You know, this hospital is going down the tubes. I can't help patients who are suffering innocently, and I gotta treat someone like you who gets himself hurt and doesn't give a damn. Put it on hold and patch me up. You know, you just miss nicking your bowel by that much. I gotta get a suture tray.
Yeah, come in. Daniel, I thought you'd gone home. On the phone with Ned Shaw with the mayor's office. The mayor had a look at our report on the ER? Finished it a short time ago. Found it thorough, intelligent, and not the least bit persuasive. They're going to sell. They'll start looking for prospective buyers ASAP. How do we proceed from here, then? Normally. I'm at the end of my career anyway. I'll go down with the ship. I suggest you start looking for another job. Good night, Donald. Resting. How did this happen? A long time ago. I almost didn't go to that party. 1965 was a wonderful time. The Beatles, Stones, Marts and Rockers, Carnaby Street, Paisley, Narrow Jacket, Twiggy. So much exuberance, so much energy, youth. I met Edgar Eisenberg at a party. We danced the latest craze. He was handsome, American, <laughs> like the way he said his A's. I thought it would be an adventure to follow him across the water. Marcy's father? One dance. A few minutes on a night in a week of a month of a swirling, vibrant year. A moment that's become a lifetime. This isn't the life I wanted. Um, I'm gonna go in and say hi to Marcy, okay?